Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Amarket as a set. I chose eight cards, the five gods and the three planeswalkers because they are the war, the most hyped cards. There was another card as for Toad and Hearth's Mentor, but they're, they have the same downward trend. Initially, when I reviewed Amaket, I said this set would be very weak for modern and legacy play. It has been even weaker than I expected. One of the key things to know is people will hype cards and promote cards and tell you to buy stuff and the set is very strong if they are card vendors. I have no personal interest. I have not purchased a single pack of Amaket. So I have no interest in promoting you to buy these cards at $35, $40. Amaket had three planeswalkers, Nissa, Lily, and Gideon. All of them have dropped tremendously in price. Nissa was pre-ordering at $38, $39, and now C is 11 and dropping. C is barely over 10 right now on eBay. I think she's around, you can probably get her for nine, and I see her going down to seven, going down to six, and eventually becoming one of those $5.95 plane walkers that I always tell you I like so much. So there is no hurry to pick her up. I remember at pre-release, one of the people at my pre-release, um, he opened a foil promo one, and he immediately traded away for a ton of value, right? So next we will talk about Lily. And Lily, you might think, hmm, Zombies, this card's going to be valuable. Uh, kind of. So she was $28 when she came out. And now she is a tad above 15. On eBay, she's around 12. And she will probably hit 10. Liliana is not as good as that other card that gives zombies plus one, plus one. And creates two, two, two zombies, which actually become... Free free zombie. So you have six power, six toughness for five mana among two bodies and a potential effect, a effect for all zombies, a benefit. So very, very good. And I don't see why you would not want that card over this card because you get so much tempo advantage. And protection, really. So Liliana, I expect her to eventually fall down to below 10, but it is good because she is a zombie theme. I just don't know in that zombie aggro build and standard. So this has no legacy or modern appeal because you already have a much better, cheaper Liliana of the Veil available for you to use. And five is very expensive in the eternal formats. I don't see people wanting to play eight copies, four copies of that one, the token maker, and four copies of this. I expect this one to be sub 10. Now, let's talk about the most hyped card, a $45, $46, $48 Gideon pre-order. It's now down to 15, and actually it looks like, yeah, I guess he's at 15, but I expect him to be sub 10 very soon. If I had to guess... After the Gideon Ally of Zendikar rotates out, this will be a sub $6 card. Maybe at some time it goes up, maybe at some time it goes down. But the traditionally, the Planeswalkers have done okay recently. You had Gideon Ally of Zendikar, Chandra finally is not $5 anymore. Uh, sorry, not the Chandra Flame Caller from Oath of the Gatewatch. And Nissa is okay. I mean, Nissa had seen not, Voice of Zendikar had she not been reprinted in a dual deck. I think it would be still valuable today, uh, more valuable than she currently is. And then in the next few sets, you have Lily, the better Lily, who's the most expensive card in standard right now. And you have Sahili, which did go up in price before obviously the banning, which took Sahili away from play. So typically in each of these sets, you have one Planeswalker worth, still worth some money. But in this particular set, you don't have any. I, I'm predicting that they will all plummet because they're all not very good. Next, we'll look, take a look at the five gods. 
Bantu is $5. He began at 8 You might not believe that is a large price drop, but percentage-wise, it quite it is a huge percentage drop. $3 off a $5 card and still falling. Bantu is actually probably one of the ones that didn't lose as much money as the other ones because it didn't come out as expensive. One of the major concerns I have about this Al Marquette set is we all agree, like I'm pretty sure there's no argument, this is a power down set. What happens is Wizard of Coast has cycles, right? Cycles like Kaladas, where they made Smuggler's Copter. That's a pretty good card. Cycles like RTR, where they had Abrupt Decay, Death Ray Shaman. Revelation, they had the Shocklands, they really pushed cards. And now we're in the cycle where we're talking about gods. Essentially, any time that we're in a set that has gods in it, you can assume we're in a really weak set because the gods are meant to appeal to casual players, which you can say that they have been successful. I don't know, like maybe casual... I assume casual players like this type of stuff. I like it, but not the value-wise. And overall, you're not going to really attract the eternal players you're not going to, Eternal player is not going to be like, hmm, Mythic, Okatra de True. Yeah, I should pay $10 for this. No, uh, as a percentage, this has dropped like a rock. Like the Cat God has not produced good numbers. And if this was your speculation, pre-order wise, you have just lost your home. Uh, back to my point. It's not a mystery, Amaket is weak. It's not a mystery, Hour of Devastation is most likely to be a weak set. I know, because we've done, we've done this song and dance before. Remember the block where we had the other gods and how I recently showed you a video where there's literally nothing valuable in those sets. Journey into, into Nyx, not a great set, power-wise, right? But gods, I mean, okay, fine, like casual players will buy the product. Journey into Nyx, what was that other one? Pharos, not a great set outside of Thought Seas, which you knew was a reprint, right? That one reprint for the set, uh, or for any money. Everything else is pennies on the dollar right now. Uh, what else do we have? So we had Journey of Nyx, Thought Seas, or uh, Pharos, and I'm missing one. Born of the Gods, equally, equally useless set in terms of MTG financial value and implications so we have the blue god who began at twenty dollars and has plummeted to five dollars and 45 cents and probably will be a bulk mythic soon and that's what happened to the other gods the one god that has surprised me is a green white god kametra because she is actually relatively pricey she's more pricey today than she was when she was in standard and that is the exception right so when you talk about gods there will be a time you can buy them very cheaply there will be a time that you a casual player this is meant for casual players to buy gods cheaply that is the entire point of the set this is not meant for modern playability this is not meant for legacy playability they understand that this particular set and probably hour of devastation will be incredibly weak uh, i look at these cards and i'm reminded of how people were hyping up the Journey into Nyx, the Pharaohs, the Born of the Gods, and we're like, oh, in a few years, these gods will be worth 20 bucks a piece. You just got to speculate on them. No, 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 no. That is not going to happen to those gods, and that's not going to happen to these gods. Maybe you have one or two that hit over 20, but you're not. most of them are not going to hold price. You have another $20 god in Hezret when it came out. It's an $8 I mean, it's not as bad as the blue god, but it's still very bad. Um, the dog god, right? I mean, overall, you have to realize that the point of reviewing stuff is to sell you stuff, right? I know I get really excited about cards because who's not going to get excited by cards, right? New cards and new gods and stuff. But a person who is trying to sell you something, they have a different incentive. And the incentive is, I want to sell you this card for $20, although I know in the future it will be $8. 
There's no way each of those gods were going to keep the price. There's no way those plane talkers were going to keep its price. The expected value does not pan out. It never does. And this particular set, just like the Journey in Tunix, Born of the Gods, it's exactly the same in my opinion. I have seen enough magic sets to realize we are in a in the sets of decline in terms of power level which is good for casual players and good if you want a cheap standard so there are benefits i'm not saying it's all negative there are benefits but in terms of hmm should i buy cards pre-order for hour of devastation hmm should i buy cards and speculate on them no the answer is no so let's take a look at the priciest god began at Looks like 20, 17 and a half. It's more than that. It's like, let's say, let's call it 20. And now it is $14. So although this god is considered the best god by far, as all the charts have indicated, it is still lost value. And you can see that all the gods dipped a ton when they came out, which makes a lot of sense. And overall, this is what happens, right? Like if you can wait a few weeks, you can wait for after the Pro Tour, you can wait a month and a month and a half, you can get cards way cheaper than if you bought them before the Pro Tour on Marquette. Uh, so therefore, the lesson to learn is do not speculate on any new cards in standard because you will get burnt to a crisp. And also that this set is very weak in terms of finance. It is a very good set if you like gods and casual cards and cheap cards. It is a great set for you. But the expected value of this opening a box has just tanked into oblivion, which is the same that has happened for most recent sets. I, I'm reminded of Battle for Zendikar where everything looked great, expected value wise. And then one day, boom. <laughs> just you had one card over ten dollars and the rest of them were not anyway that was that is it leave me a comment below bye guys